Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Randy Martinson with Martinson Ag over on the livestock. We have live cattle higher, feeders lower, and the hogs are mostly higher this morning. And in the grains, we're mixed. Corn has been pretty strong. We're mixed in the soybean complex as well as wheat. And Randy, let's start off with corn. We're putting weather premium in. What is there um, some disappointment about rains over the weekend and ideas that maybe crop ratings are going to be lower today or what? Yeah, that's exactly what's helping to push the corn market. You know, we did see some disappointing rains as Iowa, northern Illinois and northern Indiana didn't pick up much any much of any rain over the weekend that was in the forecast. The southern regions did pick up a little bit, but the forecast right now is calling for some hit and miss showers yet. And uh, a lot of people are losing confidence that the it potentially is going to happen. Of course, we're looking at the cooler temperatures now in the short term in the one to five day forecast, but then heat returns too. So I think the market is looking at all that and helping to put some premium back into the corn market. So corn, USDA left yield at 181.5 bushels per acre on the Friday WASD, which we kind of expected, but there's a lot of talk that yield is already starting to decline. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, it's kind of hard to think that it wouldn't be when you're going, you know, almost six weeks with and you know hardly any measurable rain in the northern parts of uh, Illinois and in the northern parts of the Corn Belt. Even up here in the northern plains, you know, we're seeing a little bit of of uh, weather adversity as well as we went from being too wet to now being too dry in a lot of areas. So it'd be kind of hard, especially with these 90 degree temps and the wind that it's been there. Not the, that we wouldn't be seeing some sort of a yield reduction. So technically, December corn futures, we went right up to that area that was our high last week. I think that was, what, 547 and a half, and we couldn't take that out. Will we, do you think? I think we have a good chance to, but I think they're going to wait to see what the noon weather runs say to make to verify whether, you know, the hot and dry in, in the 6 to 10 and further out forecast. I also think they might wait to see what the crop condition ratings say this afternoon. If we see another 5% or bigger drop, then I think we could see that taken out overnight and into tomorrow. And if we stay dry for the next couple of weeks, then it really starts to become critical, doesn't it? It does. I mean, you know, right now, I mean, you're starting to push this crop into some, uh, you know, into maturity that where it starts making a difference as far as the yield is concerned. I would bet that pretty soon, you know, Illinois and, and the Eastern Corn Belt, Central Corn Belt, their corn is going to be advancing enough where it's going to be getting ready to tassel here pretty soon. And that certainly is going to cause some trouble uh, if we continue to see this heat. So November soybeans are up today and it's a little early. That's an August crop, obviously, in terms of yield being set. But is soybeans just uh, getting a little bit of spillover help from the corn market or what? Yeah, it is. I mean, you're right. I mean, we really don't have to worry about soybeans until a little later in the growing season. So right now, you know, they're kind of just following along. I, uh, we, we should see the last of the planting progress. It's likely their conditions are going to decline uh, as well. So I would bet that we're going to see a, de a small decline. I would think that because we saw some exports last week, we're probably cheap enough to start encouraging a little bit of buying and that might be helping to support a little bit too. But the July contract is where we would see that push, and July is actually down today. It looks like they're unwinding some of those bull spreads. Why? Well, I think part of it is I think a lot of the end users have switched, or you know, a lot of the pricing is now going off of August. So I think because of the inversion, they've rolled a little bit early, and I, I would expect that that's what we're seeing is a lot of them are getting out of the July going into the deferred contracts because a little bit longer time for, for being able to price. The meal market's down to, or up today, I'm sorry, and the oil market's down. Just the inverse last week in terms of the weekly closes. Soybean oil had a big week up. We had meal with a big week down. So what do you think? Are we just reversing the spreads today? Maybe a little bit of profit taking on the spreads. Uh, you know, I don't know if they're looking at, you know, still seeing Argentina's production as being estimated low. Maybe we can get some exports on the soybean meal side. But I think overall, it's just a little bit of spread unwinding taking place again. Were you surprised that November beans got back above the $12 mark here? And if so, where do we go now? Hmm. You know, I, I wasn't surprised that we could get back up above 12. I, I figured a weather rally would be able to get us there. I didn't think it would happen this soon. It seems like this market is doing everything a little bit earlier than what would be normal. Uh, I do think it's got a chance that maybe if we continue, continue to see this hot and dry forecast come into play, I think we could get that thing up to 12 and a half. Gotcha. 
So a pretty quiet day in the wheat market, Randy, and we're seeing what some spread action or what's going on in the wheat market because it seems like a pretty quiet day there. It's pretty pretty quiet in the wheat. I mean, I think, you know, one, you are looking at rains across the Southern Plains. That's not really going to help the wheat, but it is, you know, causing a little bit of improvement with head, with filling and that in the wheat that hasn't been harvested yet in Northern Kansas and in Nebraska. So there might be some improvement there, some help. They are expecting to see conditions unchanged to the left on, uh, or a little better today. In the winter wheat, I think that's helping a little bit. Spring wheat country up here, we're seeing a little bit adverse. I think we'll see conditions decline. But the fact that we're just not competitive and nobody really wants our wheat, I think, is just keeping the thumb on this market. Right. And is KC wheat seeing a little harvest pressure? Will we see normal harvest pressure just because this is a short crop or not? You know, I think it'll, we will, I mean, but it'll be shorter. I mean, I think seasonals, we always see the market drift once you start the harvest. And once we get to be about 30 to 50% through harvest, you start to see the market recover again. I don't think that's going to change. I think that seasonal movement will happen. I don't think that the the pressure will be as great uh, that we normally would see during harvest just because of the, the lower bushels. Gotcha. So cattle market, uh, we have consolidated off the contract and record highs here, and we scored those key reversals last week. Do you think if cash is higher this week that we'll go back up and negate those areas or not? I think the live cattle market has a chance to do that, especially the front month, June. I mean, it's still holding, what, a $12 discount to where the cash is at. So that June contract is going to be somewhat supportive to that. The others, I, you know, we're going to be a little bit, I think, sloppier in, in performance. I do think the feeder cattle market will continue to see a little bit of a pullback, not just because of the technical pressure, but also because of the strength in corn. And, you know, I do think, like you mentioned, that key reversal, you know, kind of did some damage to the market. And, you know, technically, we do need to see a little bit of sell off. I'm in the camp that we should see a little bit more correction um, tests to some support lines. And then I think we have a chance to see this market come roaring back and put in new highs. We'll see what cash does this week and if we can make it the third week up because it's been quite a ride here. Uh, the other thing we're watching over in the cattle market, maybe other markets as well, Fed meeting coming up here this week on Wednesday. What's your thought and what are the Fed fund futures telling us about what kind of a rate increase we could see? You know, yeah, right. I mean, the Fed starts the meeting tomorrow. They're going to conclude it on Wednesday with their the rate increase or their announcement of what they're going to do with interest rates. I think right now with where things are falling, they're leaning towards not doing anything in the federal with the in, interest rates. Uh, I would expect that tomorrow's CPI numbers might cause a little, you know, to push them one direction or the other for sure. But I think right now they're going to leave uh, the rates unchanged and see how that uh, impacts the economy. Okay, thanks for joining us. That's Randy Martinson with Martinson Ag, and that's Markets Now.